Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome to another stream. I have a very special video with a very special guest standing right next to me here. Uh, Jack Settlement is joining us today, and we're going to talk about Z.Run, which is a online horse racing game. Now you can say, well, that's kind of a silly thing, but this is for real money. It's a crypto horses game. Uh, you can buy, you can sell, you can breed, you can race, uh, and all of these things are done with and for real money using Ethereum as the base for all of that. So it's a very deep game. It's not as simple as, okay, I'm just going to buy a horse. I'm going to race it. There's a lot of things that you have to set up. There's a lot of things that you have to get going with. And I just opened an account the other day and Jack is kind enough to be here today to kind of walk me through things. He is a guru in the crypto space and in the NFT space. Uh, and I'm really excited to have him on the show. So Jack, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go through this. Uh, the first thing that we're going to kind of go over uh, just talking about very quickly is you're going to need a MetaMask account because that is the go-between from with which you're going to have to load your Ethereum onto Zedrun. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Uh, it is a Chrome extension. If you use Google Chrome, go make a MetaMask account if you want to do this because you're going to need to do that. And then you can take your Ethereum from whatever other site, upload it onto or you know, transport it over to Z.run uh, and use that to buy your horses. So uh, why don't we start at the beginning? So let me bring up the the site. There's a lot of different types of horses. There's a lot of different colors of horses. Uh, there's breeding of horses. There's four types, right? So there's male and female, obviously, but there's male that has not had a baby. There's male that has had a baby. It's what? It's a colt and a stallion? Yes. And then there's and, fillies and there's mares. Mare, yep. Right. Uh, they have a fantastic Discord as well. So if you uh, are in my Discord, add that to your list of Discords. If you're not in my Discord, what the F are you doing? Get in my Discord and then join the Zed Discord as well so that you can surround yourself with other people uh, that are trying to immerse themselves. And again, we'll make a channel in the subs Discord uh, on my channel to uh, it, just like we have the sports card channel and everything where people are talking top shots or whatever sports cards are dropping that day on Dutch auction. Uh, we'll have a Zed Racing channel in there as long as there's enough interest for it. So why don't you tell us where to start uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so uh, right behind my head in the stream mm -hmm. is where you would log in and connect your MetaMask. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, do you already have, are you already logged in? I'm logged in, yeah. Okay, all right, great. So yeah, so you would just log in through your MetaMask. It'll pop up. It'll ask to authenticate um, and you'll just sign through MetaMask. Mm -hmm. um, so then... Uh, let's start with, let's go to your stable, which would be the setting. Um, also kind of behind my head, if you click the, um, like click my guy yeah. Or, or yeah. I have not named my stable yet. I'm taking yeah, so, suggestions. I have zero horses. <laughs> so this is, yeah, exactly. Zero thoroughbreds. You can see, you know, all the information you can rename your stable. You can also go into the, uh, settings and if you click on settings real quick, we'll be able to see your um, wallet address. So the wallet address is mm -hmm. where if someone um, wanted to send you a horse, that's where you would input put that. Mm -hmm. And then there's also where you can click transfer horse, you would put their wallet address in to that. So that's just some background mm -hmm. on like how exchanges go on the site. Um, you're stable. This is like your profile. I don't want to put so, that on the screen, do I, or do I? Uh, I do, I, I would just avoid yeah. it. But but people's addresses I know are, are all over the yeah. place. But let's start at racing. So right now, the as of this recording, the mm -hmm. marketplace and breeding is not currently up. So all we have are the races. So you've got your Griffin race, which is the first race that any horse hops into before they're classified. Mm -hmm. And then you have class five, class four, class three, class three, or class two, class one. So and they've added it, more, right? So like when this started in 2019, they only had one, two, and three. So now they've even added more depth as more players are playing. They're giving you a place to get in where your horse can fit in. If you don't have like a super horse, it's going to be, what is it? Class one and two are the highest. Yes. Right. Yes. So like now it's not just like, well, you're going to have to jump in the deep end and take a whole bunch of L's. Uh, like you said, there's a first race, then there's class fives, class four. So you can kind of bring your horse along uh, as his career progresses exactly. or her career progresses. Yes. And I have a lady, so we, uh, we love the Phillies. So click into like Japan Festival Cup and you'll be able to see 
um, the different, uh, yeah, the class five race, if you scroll down. So the numbers next to the horse's name determines mm -hmm. what class they can race in. And you, uh, same thing with, you know, youth sports. If you're 14, you can only play up. You can, same thing here, you can only race up. So I know that like, it looks like 20 would be the cutoff and then you become a horse, a uh, class four horse and you can, you know, continue on. Class one is 80s and above. Um, and depending on first place, it gets added like five points to your score, three points for a second. So this 19 for, here, yeah. violets or blue 19. Yes. Talk to me about that, just specifically with this horse. So it looks like that horse ha would, uh, you know, has won some races. Mm -hmm. You can see 16 career wins, but also has probably finished 12th or 11th or 10th in a bunch of races and has fallen backwards. So you actually can declassify mm -hmm. uh, based on your horse's performance. So it stays in the appropriate class. And I think some people, some horses are really good at either finishing 12th, which will keep them in a low class or winning the race. Whereas some people are looking for consistency, but then you're just running fourth or seventh in class one or two. So there's complexities there, but go to, go to class one to kind of show. Um, I think there's only two races normally at a time, sometimes three, yeah. whereas in class five, there were, you know, five races, you can see the prize pool is a bit bigger here. And if you click on either of uh, those class one races, we'll be able to see the horses that are in there. Um, and then I can kind of take you through a cool exercise. I recognize this name. Expect to win. Oh, there we go. I didn't realize uh, we would be we'd be on screen. So you can see what's interesting about expect to win mm -hmm. is she is an 81. So I'm right at the borderline where I'll admit, I don't think she's going to be, you know, a top of the class one racer, mm -hmm. but she might be a supreme class two racer okay. so we want her to maybe fall down to the 79 so we can continue to race her in class two um six percent win percentage and why did i buy this horse specifically so mm -hmm. we talked about z1 z2 um i don't know if you have or i have the breakdown of how many horses there will ever be i don't know if i shared that graphic. 000, i think 30, was the number yes. of the genesis so, horse Exactly. So they're dropping 000... 2000 on Friday, April the 2nd. Exactly. Correct. So okay. uh, 38,000. But the breakdown is there's only a thousand Z1 Nakamoto's. There's only a thousand Z2 Nakamoto's. Okay. And then Z3 Zabos, which is what expect to win is. I'm not positive. I think it's 2000 or 3000. Still pretty scarce for that tier. And then the, your Z10s, you know, there might be 10,000 of them or something. Um, so you can see. 6% win percentage. So why did I pay, you know, as much as I could have gotten an unraced Z1 for that? So if you want to pull up the Discord, this to me is the most important part of the entire thing. So if you go to the Z Discord and you go to the search channel, we can search the odds on the horses. And what these odds are, are the uh, thousand uh, simulations of that race based off Z's back end so um you run a horse 12 times and it wins four times but then you go and check the odds and it's like well it, it was 15 to 1 so it Where just had want, a good what, what uh, folder do you want me in over here uh i don't think it matters i think if you just search top right uh oh, okay. if yeah if you just search the horse expect to win we can kind of run through the odds um and i can also show you what to look for when you're reading the odds Okay, I've got expect to win, and there's the South Sweep. There's there you go, Teatro Opera Cup. What am I? What so, do you want me to click? Yeah, on? yeah. So we'll just scroll. But Teatro, uh, let's start at the Teatro Cup. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a Class Two race, like okay. I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so you want to look for three things: the class that the horse was raced in, the entry fee. Make sure it was a paid race. A lot of people will run unpaid, which are easier races to kind of boost their horses and then look at the distance. So you can see the best odds on this, on this race was gin with a 7.4 odds. Mm -hmm. um, so not sure off the top of my head what the implied probability of, of winning that race would be if someone wants to do that, but any of the math can... wizards in chat, I want to get after. <laughs> yeah, that. exactly. 
uh but you can see italian i can't see on the twitch stream like the full name italian so I got Jin with like... uh 7.4 drifter at 9.5 italia m m i g with uh 774 expect to win 8.45 uh i am assuming that these are just to one so yes, eight exactly. and a half to one roughly uh seven and three quarter to one nine and a half to one for drifter out of gate 12 uh, the long shot in this race looked like it was clear water in gate six with 23 plus to one. Exactly. So if you keep scrolling down, we can just briefly see expect to win in the South sweep in Australia was 8.22 to one. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you go down a couple more, we're going to be able to see what expect to wins odds were in a class one. So right here, the right Arc here, de Triomphe. One. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you see a 13.4 to one. Mm -hmm. So now that's where I kind of get the information of, okay, really good odds, you know, third favorite, second favorite, sometimes the favorite in class two, but then when we're racing in class one, a little over our head, not, not that we can't win races, not that we can't compete, but probably not, you know, a, a, a digital Kentucky Derby winner at this right. point in time. Um, so that's just like all the different data to take in with these things. Now I have a couple of quick questions. Yeah. Go if you don't it. mind me interrupting. No, definitely. Uh, this race, this class one race is 2000 meters. This other one was 1600. This other one's a thousand. Are there specific horses that you can breed and or race? And you find out that my horse is better in a thousand meter race than a 2000 meter race. My horse is better in the mid distance uh, than the short or the long distance. Uh, and sticking them in those races and sticking only to those races or is, is everything just kind of random based on the breeding and everything else? No, 100%. The okay. distance is the most, um, the most important thing. And that's what we're going through right now is a lot of people are selling horses that have ran three races and they won one. So they got 33% win percentage, right. but you have no data. And then there's also horses that are 0 and 6 and they're, they could be really good horses. But they you'll put see a them lot in the wrong races or they put them it, above class or exactly above class. You need to make sure they're racing in the right class mm -hmm. in the right distance. And also a little edge is in the right gate. So there's a understanding that the gate preference actually matters on horses performance. Now think about how many times you would have to race a horse at, at a certain distance and at a certain gate to even know, you know what that is. And most of these horses have under 50 races. The gates so, aren't, randomized gates are not randomized so if you were to go into a race right now it's first come first serve and so you can say my you, horse runs really good out of the four hole uh exactly. and there's nobody in this race yet so i'm gonna put my horse in this race and we're gonna hit the four hole exactly okay and and i think most people are like oh i hit my I, my horse's distance and gate i got such a good chance you know your edge might move from nine to one to eight and a half to one but uh it definitely matters make sure it's in the right class, make sure, and you need to race it to, to learn that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think expect to wins run a little over 70 and think about these simulations are on a thousand races. So we still don't know if the, we have the right distance. We think it's 1400 and 1600 and we, we've ran some numbers on it and it definitely leans that way, but Ducky or uh, Ducky Mallon is like the, the secretariat of the, um, of the site class one horse that pulls six to one odds right which is just by far the lowest on the site and ducky or some of these other really great race horses have gone through 50 race losing streaks and you know you would think you now when most horses have only run 50 times it's just like how do we even know if these simulations are on a thousand so i'm not even you know I still have 30% more to go to get to hundred races and then 10 X that and really get the data. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the new strategy seems to be get these unraced Z ones, breed them and just, you know, try and try and get some value back. Okay. So here's, here's really the rub. Horses are sold out on the primary market, the drops are gone. There's no horses that you can purchase directly from the site. There is a drop on Friday, April the 2nd, and there's different times for it. Like there's four of them, right? Uh, yes, they're going off this Friday in 30 minute increments. So five o'clock is the Z1s and twos, then 5.30 is the Z3, Z4, et cetera. Z1 is better, the, the lower the number, the better? 
Yes. yes. Okay. And those are obviously going to be more expensive than the Z2s, Z3s, Z4s, and down the list. Yes. Uh, if you go to um, uh, Zed Gazette's Twitter page, I don't. Uh -huh. Do you have the pri the projected pricing in in any of your stuff? I don't have anything open with it. I'm sure it exists okay. somewhere. Yeah. So if you go to Zed Gazette, I'm there. Um, uh, his Twitter page, though. Okay. And you scroll down to, let me see when he posted this. Um, okay. 17 hours ago, you have a bloodline waiting. Um, I'm trying to look for, here we go. Uh, March 30th. You'll see he quote tweeted Remy's racing. I can also drop you the link, but it was probably 10, 15 tweets down his page. Let me know if you need me to, to link to you. If you link it in uh, in our little DM thread. Okay. I, I might just be able to find chat, it faster. I chatted to you in Zoom. Okay. Um, so what this is going to be is it's been dynamic pricing on all these different drops. And they've they've gone up by anywhere from 10 to 50% depending on the class of horse. So I just think this is important. And this is really what people want to be looking at, which is uh, you can see two numbers here. You've got uh, the drop on 319, which was the last drop. Your Z1s unraced around 13K, Z2, et cetera, all the, round, all the way down to the, the Buterins or Buterins of just 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. And now uh, these are the price projections for uh, April 2nd, mm -hmm. which will be tomorrow. Um, so you can see 23% increase. So this should give people a really good idea of you know, what, what to expect in the drop. And when the drop happens, it will be first come first serve. So you're going to want to have your MetaMask wallet filled with the amount of ETH, Ethereum, that you want mm -hmm. to uh, purchase with. And that's for, you want to have it in MetaMask or do you want to have it already loaded onto Z.run? Yeah, so that uh, is, is also pretty confusing right now. So mm -hmm. you enter races with WETH. Uh -huh. um, which you can just convert on the site. But I do believe to buy the actual horses, you'll be buying them with Ethereum in the drop um, straight from the marketplace. Okay. But, so you but have to have them I, on yeah. your MetaMask, not on Z.run. Right. And they're, and they're linked. They're linked. So it, it should work out fine. But we, right. we should confirm that at some point um, just to make sure. But that I think more information on the drop and how it's going to run. And we could run into a top shot situation where, I mean, last time there was definitely site malfunctions just mm -hmm. with the amount of traffic. And there are five, five X, the users that are going to be in this trap. Um, yes, Ethan. So someone wrote in the chat, ETH in MetaMask is not Z balance. Z balance is also known as W ETH, slightly mm -hmm. different variation. Um, but yeah, we need to figure out. Let me let me message my guy, see if he can get us an answer on that. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Like I said, so this is kind of the how-to. So that's how you kind of get everything started. Can you talk to me about, we talked about your horse and all these different things. You can see, you get in whatever your price is. So like the, the cheapest drop, these Z10s, these Buterins or Butterins or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Uh, $155, $156 expected price, $181, $300. So like... Yeah, this is going to cost money and you're going to have to get in for something if you're down here at this price, if you're just a beginner and want to just mess around with a horse. Uh, that's your your gatekeep is is about that price. Now, if you're a super high roller and you want to get in and say, you know what, I want one of these Nakamoto Z1s, it's going to cost you probably over 16K, maybe 17K in that range, depending on how many people. And there's a limited amount, a finite amount that are available tomorrow and you just got to grab one. And they're sure that there's some... Uh, super duper stables on here that have all this cash are just like, you know what? I want to corner the market. I want to get at least one of these. Uh, and they're going to go fast probably. So if you want to yeah. get one, you get one. And, the, and these I are going to go way faster than these. Um, which ones? The, the expensive ones, I believe, will go faster than the cheaper ones. I think so. So ironically, last time, the Z1s were the last to sell out. Now, you know, with the attention it's kind of gotten... I mean, they are expensive, you know, yes. like they they are still 15 grand, but I do think they'll sell out quicker. I think it took four hours last time, mm -hmm. but also last time there were site malfunctions and stuff. So 
we'll see. But let's go through right now. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things with Zed is that just because you buy the Z1 mm-hmm. does not necessarily mean you're even going to be better than a Z10. So I think for a, for a sports friendly audience, this is a really fair analogy, which is think of your Z1 as your top five draft pick. Mm-hmm. So the odds of hitting on that are super high. That's why they're valuable. But Anthony Bennett still exists. Same reason with the Z10. Was that a shot there at it's, Anthony it's Bennett? A little, a little, a little. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but your Z10s are your undrafted guys or your end of the second rounds. And, you know, Jokic exists. So the odds of you, right, if you were to trade these draft picks, the odds would say you have better odds to hit on your top five pick, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind that, like, putting – Normally you put a lot of money into top shot in the early days. If you put in 15 K you got LeBron and you knew what LeBron James was. This is more like you're investing in rookies with high upside, but there's no guarantees on anything. You just have better odds. You can even say you're investing in minor leaguers. Let's say from, you know, baseball's yeah, first yeah. pitches today. Opening day is today. You're investing in minor leaguers. And some of these guys are going to turn into all-stars and some of these guys are going to turn into franchise players. But the reality is uh, you may not get there with the guy that, you know, you're going to buy this this top prospect who looks like he can't miss, but he gets to the show and he can't get there. So like, to me, it feels like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because it's very likely that I'm wrong here, <laughs> that if you buy a Z1 or a Z2, you're hoping to compete in class one and class two races. Right? That, that would exactly, but those exactly. horses may not be champions at those races. And you're going to have, you might end up with a class three, class four, uh, horse, which is not what you want to pay for. So there is risk involved where if you get one of the cheaper horses, Z five through 10, you might be able to, through putting them in the right races, through putting them in the right classes to class up to a class four, three, possibly a class two horse, uh, if you bring them along the right way and you get a lot of value out of that horse, uh, but it comes down to what you do and if you know what you're doing. Yes, that is very accurate. And to to show that in its best case, Ducky, which is the best horse on the platform, is I believe a Z4. Okay. So it's the winningest horse on the platform, most dominant, best odds, and it's a Z4. So now though, the other thing to take into account mm-hmm. is the breeding. So we come from horse racing where, um, you know, the reason you want your horse to win the Kentucky Derby, you win a nice prize pool, but Mm -hmm. what you do after that's really what matters here, right? Horses make way more or horse owners, I should say, make way more money from breeding the horse than they make from racing the horse. Exactly. So will we see improved prize pools, which is important for the racing aspect, but then what's the breeding look like? So we can talk a little bit about breeding, which is also closed right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you said, I believe it's per month, seven, the, a male horse can produce seven offspring. A female can only produce two offspring and it costs money depending on the tier of the horse to breed. So I think uh, the numbers last time were like, 0.3 ETH maybe for a Z1 and then it mm-hmm. kind of trickled down from there. But that's going to that's going to have to change also dynamically with the value of these things. When do they everyone... project that that's going to open if you don't mind me cutting? It. Yeah, my understanding is the drop is Friday and then within 72 hours they would ideally open breeding. But so they're hoping by second week of March or second week of April that they're going to have breeding open again and you can actually Yes, exactly. You can do you can do your thing. So mm-hmm. now if you want to pull up the coat color, which will give a little uh, mm-hmm. better Got understanding it. at least of, um, you know, what to do with breeding. So coat color uh, is a scarcity rarity thing. One of the really interesting things here is you can see coat color is highly valued by players. And as a result, you know, it's carefully considered. But we don't know, as you can also see, if coat color affects anything more than just the rarity and collectability. So we're talking about scarcity here. May not, not make them that, faster, may not make them a better horse, but it may make it more attractive to buyers or to breeders. Exactly. So for example, once again, Ducky, if you scroll down to the pyramid or the color chart, 
is a suave mauve, which um, is just a mystical bottom right. You'll be able to see of that color chart. I believe it's a number 10 that. here. Yeah. So, so you see the most rare coat are those ones at the top. Then you have the rare ones and then you have, yeah. So, so the best horse on the entire platform is a Z4 and a common coat. So mm -hmm. you would think that maybe it doesn't have as much to do with its racing, but at this time it's a little unclear. Um, but like to me, it, it just means that that there's a million ways that you can get in on this. Right. So like, it depends exactly. on whatever scratches the itch that you want. So like, if you're somebody look, I just want to have a horse and I want to race it. You mentioned there was, you can race, uh, to the buy-in races. You could also play like online poker. You could play for free money. Right. Uh, right. you can just race your horse and it keeps the stats on the free races, right? Those count. Yes. So you can have your horse just run free race. If you don't want to pay money, if you're, if you're not somebody with a really large banker, like, look, I just want to have a horse. I want to race my horse. I want to have some fun. Uh, you can do that. You want to be somebody who's really into the breeding and the bloodlines and the color lines and everything else. You can do that. You want to be a collector who says, I have this really rare NFT horse. There's that avenue for you to go down as well. So there's not one way to do this. There's hundreds of ways that you can be as interested or in depth or as far down the rabbit hole as you want to be depending on the choices that you're going to make. 100%. And I think that's what's so great about the platform is like you said, it, it fills content here. It fills baseline entertainment. I think the major issue with Top Shot is everyone looks at it as an investment because there's nothing to do with them right now. You know, there's no reason to mm -hmm. go besides to check the prices. Here, we go to the movies, you go to the Knicks game, you go to a baseball game. Mm -hmm. We pay for entertainment and if this entertains and feels right, video games, people spend hundreds of dollars for entertainment purposes. And this feels very entry level to where you only have to spend a few hundred bucks. And on that, I do want to just throw out a side note about gas. I feel like we should discuss gas, the gas a little. fees. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Every so transaction gas, with Ethereum has a fee that goes along with it. Exactly. And gas fees have been ranging anywhere from four to eight bucks all the way up to 30 to 60. Mm -hmm. So, just keep in mind to account for it, right? Like if we think the Z10 is going to cost 150, put 200 in or put 250, just so you're not, you know, screwed at that point. So is the gas fee tied to the amount? Is it, is it VIG or is it flat? So I, the I, gas fee on a $10 transaction, I'm just using USD for the purposes yeah, yeah. of not using like decimals to the 10th place uh yeah. like a $10 transaction could have the same gas fee as a $10,000 transaction or is I, it scale? I think it scales, but not, it's not like 10%. It's you know? not one-to-one. -one. It, it's not a straight exactly. line. Yeah. So I think it's like, you know, if it's under a hundred right now, maybe it costs five bucks. And if it's 10,000, maybe it costs 60 bucks. So it's still, you know, it's not 5% necessarily, but right. it does go up from my understanding, but could be wrong. And then gas fee prices change based on the time of day. So also you could run into a situation tomorrow if, you know, thousand people are trying to send ETH at the exact same time, mm -hmm. the gas fee may, may go up. So we will see, um, but just wanted to, to note that. So I think that's, you got breeding, coat color. This is where I'm going to get, this is where I'm going to be way down the rabbit hole right here. Yeah. You know, like coming up with, okay, well, if I take this, you know, yeah. horse and breed it with this horse, I'm going to get this type of horse out of it. You know, this guy's got this, it's going to move me up in terms of yeah. rarity or like, uh, this is going to breed, uh, this is going to produce a short track runner. This is going to be like, this, this is where I'm going to get lost. And that's and just lost in a bad way. This is where I'm going to spend all of my time. I, I can yeah. tell you already. And you can see the 65% uh, of a sire, right? So mm -hmm. the male is taking more into account, but when it comes to breeding, uh, it goes down levels. So a Z1 Nakamoto and a Z1 Nakamoto produces a Z2 exclusive or legendary. Mm -hmm. um, and then legendary horses produce exclusive. So that kind of funnels down. To uh, maintain similar... the rarity of the upper echelon. Exactly. So you're not so just there's... gonna keep creating Z1, 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 Z1. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a, a, a pyramid and a hierarchy to uh, this once, even once, breeding is still you know it is in full flow exactly so that's something to take into account another thing is the female keeps the offspring so 
the female keeps and gets to name the offspring. So you may need to have a situation where you arrange uh, ahead of time mm -hmm. with uh, like, let's say you have a Z2 horse, but you don't have a Z1 or you don't have a Z3 and you want to breed, you either go to the breeding grounds on the site mm -hmm. or you can breed offline and come to an agreement. Okay, this first one, I get to name, it's mine. Second one, you get to name, I'll send it to you. Um, and then that's going to become its own marketplace within itself because we still don't know ducky who's a z4 right yeah. he'll never or he'll never be able to breed a z2 legendary because he's, he's at that status so what are the odds that even though he's the best racehorse he'll breed the best where in you know real life the best racehorses are known to breed the best offspring mm -hmm. it's still like kind of unclear so if you do like game theory and you do like statistics there is a lot of potential edge to kind of discover these things. And that's why I like Zed Gazette because their breeding theory right now, um, which we link to is like mares, which are only 35% of coat color. Like people want fillies because they're fresher, but the mares have the most value in, in their opinion. So uh, it's very interesting. I'm going to say the, the different... female horses, because of what you said, that person keeps the offspring. Yeah seem like they would hold more value over time, even though they can breed less than the male. Exactly. But if you have a Z1 female and you're only interested in a Z1 male, then they obviously hold a lot of leverage there yeah. too. Cause you have, you know, there's you have leverage no on both sides and it's different exactly. leverage. Because like the male can breed seven times in a month. The female can breed two or whatever uh, per month. Exactly. So like, again, deep down the rabbit hole we're, we're trying to yeah. stay closer to the shallow yeah. end right now no but i do think a lot of people right you buy a couple of z10s let's say your budget's 500 yeah. instead of going up and getting a z7 you buy you know two or three z10s and then you're breeding and now you got like this entire stable and you're mm -hmm. and you're shooting off lotto tickets versus going all in on one z7 exactly and it's just kind of like i said if you're viewing it as like you said for like your entertainment dollar Right. And this is a place where you're going to try and get in. You're going to say, okay, look, this is what I find fun. This is where I'm going to go. And I'm going to race these horses, whether in free races or in like the gen five race or the class five races, not gen five. Um, you can just go in and race them. And then, like you said, you can breed your own horses together. Yes. You don't need a, another stable to breed with. Yes, I believe you can you can breed your own horses together, which would make a lot of sense. But there is no inbreeding. No, so, yeah, they have to be from a different family tree. Yes, but cousins are legal. <laughs> Fair enough. So <laughs> apparently the track is in West Virginia. No offense to anybody in West Virginia, <laughs> but I did go to Syracuse and that is deep, deeply ingrained in me from college. Uh, so here's all the different different types. So we've got the Bloodline, Nakamoto, uh, Sabo, Finney, and the Buterin, which we said were the, these are the most rare, second most, third most, fourth most. Uh, yeah. It has to deal with their purity, how available they are, uh, and, and their bloodline scarcity. All of them are scarce, except for the Buterin, which is more common. Uh, and then, again, you go way down the rabbit hole on every one of these things. So, like, this isn't going to be a video that's going to tell you, well, if you do this and this and this, and then you're going to make a $100,000 horse, and then you win, and then, you know, we're to the moon with all of our horses. Like, that's just not where we're at you yeah know? we got a good question in the chat from rob 81 says more important to you bloodline or gen good meaning question. would you rather have a genesis buterin so z1 but one of the first mm -hmm. thirty-eight thousand, or a legendary finney so you go up a up a tier but now you you kind of have the offshoot that's interesting and captain kickass says genesis is more important in his opinion i just don't think there's enough data to say what's better in terms of what will create a better racehorse but by nature it's like top shot series one or series two would you rather own... i think it's two separate i think it's two separate answers yeah or, or there's there's two separate answers that are in that question yeah uh so we, we need to define what you're looking for are you looking for investability right right uh, so you'd want something that's higher up and more rare, or are you looking for, I want the horse that's going to have a higher win percentage after 500 or a thousand races. Uh, typically what is a, a, 
what would you say the range is on win percentage? Like you say, yeah, it's a good horse because he has a win percentage of X. What would you say? Yeah, that? so I would say anything over 10% is a pretty strong win percentage. Okay, so like 10 to 15 or 10 to 20? 10 to, 10 to 12. I'd okay. say once you once you hit 15, you're looking at a really strong a horse. Yeah. yeah, anything over 17 or 18 is, you know, that's you, good info. You, you hit the nuts, yeah. Okay, that's great info. So yeah. if you've got a 10% horse, 10% win percentage horse, is that what you're looking for? Or are you looking for, I want a horse that has a greater possibility of selling for more money because of rarity. And those are two totally different things as Jack has explained. Just because you have a rare horse doesn't mean it's gonna be a winning horse. Just because you have a winning horse doesn't mean that it's a rare horse. As he said, the the number one horse on the site is as common as common could be and is not a Z1 and is not, you know, does not check all these investor boxes, but it's the best horse on the site. Yes. And a cool thing to remember, because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us are gamblers, obviously, and we like box openings, is that all the Genesis horses haven't been released. So while Ducky is the best right now, we're at 50%, right? So there mm -hmm. could easily be another horse in the Z4, Z7 level who just becomes, you know, the premier racehorse. Yeah. And, and again, like we said, there's I, I've identified three different ways that you could you could play the game to have fun, right? One, you're playing because you want to race the horses and you want to have a winning horse. You want to be that guy who wins 12% of your races. Two, you want to be the guy who's breeding different horses because you enjoy seeing the bloodlines and creating different names and giving with your friends and having fun. Uh, uh, or if you're an investor and you're like, you know what? I want to get the rarest horse because I want to own this thing and I think I'm getting it on the ground floor. Uh, Jack, kind of like you do with Top Shot. It's like, look, I'm going to yeah. get in. I'm going to have this horse and I'm going to buy it for X amount of dollars and I believe it's going to be worth 10X in six months. Exactly. And let's talk about that as kind of the last piece to the equation, which is why I believe the site will be, you know, all these things still, they need the founders to be great. They need money. They need, you know, traction. They need all these things. But if you pull up Zest, let's show, let's show everyone the Zest platform. And this is what's interesting. You just talked about there's three ways to get involved. Well, I believe a fourth way is coming and mm -hmm. no one in this chat or on the stream owns a physical racehorse at least i don't think so but we've all bet the ponies before and that is a great way to engage with it so they have created this platform called zest link me in the Play. chat yeah here i'll, I'll send Put it, it in to the you. Little zoom chat um there you go so this is like their beta uh, beta product. I know beta triggers like half the people in the <laughs> NFT world nowadays. Um, but you can bet on any horse race uh, with those same odds that we were showing before. Mm -hmm. So now when you you buy your horse, you can get the chat to come in here and actually bet on the horse. Now these are just play dollars, play zest dollars. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that one day you'll actually be able to wager real money dollars instead of betting horse racing on DraftKings online casino, you're betting it through, you know, this, you know, gambling license could be 10 years down the line. It could be two years down the line, who knows, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a ton of upside with that, especially in terms of the international market as well. So there's a global appeal to this. Obviously there's always been a global appeal to anything, horse racing, anything, gambling, sure. uh, all those sorts of things. I think that this is a great way uh like i said like i i i'm gonna be into the racing i'm probably gonna be into the breeding and if i happen to hit the nuts on a horse and, and it's worth a, a good amount of money then awesome but like that's not yeah my goal is not like i'm gonna get in here and i'm gonna make millions right and right. i think that that's and, and always a better Owners way to Club. approach anything is that like look i'm gonna get in this because i want i'm interested and want to spend some time doing this i'm kind of looking at it through a video game lens right. right and i know that other people aren't looking at it through that lens but like i said there's a lot of ways to to go about things yeah, like Derby Owners Club. I never raced in a tournament. Like I never did it for money ever. So I didn't even know that was available until you told I me had today. Charts. I like yeah. based on which track, where you should, <laughs> where you should whip, where you should hold, whether exactly. you have a front runner, whether you got a horse that's a chase. Like I had it all. <laughs> so so I think that's like easily the same example as like put a hundred bucks. I put hundreds of dollars into that game just to play for fun and mm -hmm. keep my little horse. And now this is kind of, yeah, let's show, I know they asked to see a horse or a race rather. So we can definitely show them a race. Is there one racing? Uh, there's, there's like always, if you go to, uh, to Twitch channel, 
Uh, no, well, yeah, either that or if you click racing on Z and just go next to run, um, hopefully there's one before the next hour. They might be backed up right now. Sometimes they just have pauses. That was one in um, 16 seconds. There you go. So you can pull that up. Um, All right, we're going. And here's your right, race. Right. Yeah, so so one of the funniest things is someone brought up like what? So it's a straight track instead of a. Uh, oh no, we might have we might have pulled up a stuck race. This happens from time to time. I broke the race. Yeah, exactly. God damn. Um, <laughs> but it's a straight track instead of like a, a round track. Mm -hmm. And people and they're like, yeah, it was too complicated to create a, a round racetrack. And people are like, wait, we're betting on this platform and you can't create a round. And they're like, no, we're going to fix that. It just wasn't priority number one. So that one doesn't um, work. Yeah. So sometimes it'll unstick and sometimes you just end up with a stuck. Like I've seen two stuck races ever. And uh, it was both times we tried showing them on a Twitch stream. So I don't know if that's really unlucky or if it just is is like that jack we broke the race yeah try Hold refreshing on. or try a different race we'll I'm going be able next to, get to one run up. this yeah. one says it's live and there's another in four minutes and we can also watch replays i know it's not as fun but you can yeah, everybody you, wants to see the live race yeah but you could you could just not tell them go to results click and and uh do a 3d <laughs> replay and they'd have no clue so so we can just show a race that way too um but yeah, it's it's a cool platform. Uh, I'm very intrigued to see where it goes. Uh, and and I think your main point that you've been driving home is like, it's for fun. Like mm -hmm. do it for fun, learn about it. And uh, you can you can own a horse, which is hilarious. So like, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna load this next race. Okay, I'll turn the music off because it's super duper loud. Hopefully yeah. this one isn't a stuck race here. This, this, one, this one goes in like three and a half minutes. So you can see they kind of walk you through once I get to that screen. Yeah. Uh, they walk you through. Here's a, they're, they're going through presenting all the horses. Yeah. Right. I don't know what class this race is. I'm, I'm not sure I can see it on there. Yeah, I can't tell. That's a Z18. This is a Z10 Bhutan. So these, this is probably a, a very, yeah, this is like a newer race. 04 and 2, 5, 5, 17, <laughs> Genotype Legendary, Genotype Genesis on this one. So like, we'll see if this one goes off. So to me, it's just, look, you get in any level that you want to get in uh, yeah. with this type of stuff. And like, there's going to be people that have a lot of money and it seems like, and then tell me if I'm wrong, it kind of feels like if you have that horse that you paid an awful lot of money for, as you said, it's going to be walled off from racing in those gen five or class five, i keep saying gen five class five yeah. class four races you're going to be in class three class two class one hopefully or you got a really shit or, or you, you really got, did you, get you, anthony bennett yeah. <laughs> you ran real bad uh yeah. if you've got a yeah. suit but but that's the point right so like yeah. the horses are are classified based on their performance and so you're not going to get dominated by somebody who it's not pay to win so to speak right it's pay to compete it's pay to invest it's pay you know right Right. And, and it is, yeah, that's a discussion that has been going on, which is like, is it pay to win? Yes, because you can buy the top horse and race the top horse, but at the lowest level, is it pay to win? No, but you can put in time and data and resources to figure out what your horse is best racing at. So it's not, but no, it's not but it's like not pay to win. Though. Like, okay. So you were like, well, it's a little bit pay to win, but you're, you're paying. If you're paying to have a class one horse, let's say, right. Yeah. You're saying I'm paying to win. You're racing against other people who have paid to do that also. So yeah, yeah. It, it, I like mean, California high school like, basketball, all the private schools in high school that want to play against each other or that want to yeah. recruit kids and get the best kids. They're all cordoned off in their own yes. category. It's now they don't play within, in, in category yeah. four, category class four, class five anymore. Division four, division five, their division exactly. one, their uh, I forget what they call it now, but like they're not playing against the smaller schools. You could be a small school that recruits. You're playing against like modern day. Correct. Exactly. If you want to pay to win, you can, and you're going to play against everybody else who's paying to win. Right. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. Uh, so once this race goes off, I think the last thing we could do is, is walk through the mark, the secondary marketplace good, and, and just show 
you know, the different things I'm looking for. That, uh, I but think that would be like, great info. Yeah. All right. So we'll do that. Perfect. Um, and then chat, ask the chat uh, any more questions they have, we can answer. Yeah, we're chat. Waiting for First of all, thank you guys for being here. Fire them off. Uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, thank you for watching this uh, on demand. Definitely drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a uh, algorithm friendly comment in the replies down below. I would greatly appreciate that as well. And what let's are get the ready to watch this race. Comments? Three, two, one. Are we stuck again? You suck, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And this is why I caution that the drop tomorrow <laughs> may not may not roll. I think we just got to hit him with the with the reply. Let me see if I can. Find me a replay, link it in chat. And we'll just watch a replay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a refresh? Show. I think somebody yeah. in chat might have it going. People, yeah, people say if you refresh. I don't think it's Oh, it was, the timer was off. It's still got 50 seconds. It's still counting down, not up. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's it's also got the channel timeout on the bottom left over there. Okay. All right. So this well, prize pool is 0. 0.0156 ETH. Yeah, that's a small prize pool, right? That's this is like I a believe so. class five race based on at yeah. least based on the horses that I saw. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I keep getting that timeout pop up in the bottom left. If chat wants to help us out with that, if this is bugged. It seems like it. I broke yeah, the it, site. It's my bad. It, <laughs> Uh, Captain Kickass said, what tools would you want to help with your racing, breeding, buying? I almost think, so obviously you want to be able to put your horse's name in and it pulls past race odds and, um, just results based on different, uh, distance and then gate. But what would be really interesting is like almost a trade machine type tool where like you put your horse in, you put another horse in and you see the likelihood of what coat they're going to get. And it also projects out like what type of offspring it would it would produce. That would be really interesting. Every time I refresh, it kicks it back to like 57 seconds. All right. Why don't we just do the. Uh, yeah, I sent you the marketplace the thing. This thing. I, OK, I sent you I sent you a. Uh, race in zoom but yeah we can go through the let's go here and we'll click that race and zoom in a minute okay um all right so right now uh you're on your tower you're filtered on the left side for everyone to just zed racehorse so matic.opensea.io has a bunch of different ones but now mm -hmm. we're filtered down to just the horses and we can sort by you know lowest to highest highest to lowest newest uh that were just posted that's where we're at right now is on newest yeah all right so we're at newest so let's go i mean we can just go from the start with farter starter uh you see that's the w e that we were we were kind of talking about which is that's zed's currency kind of uh -huh. um and you can transfer on zed within the wallet from eth to w e um but if you click on farter starter we can go through Gotcha. Uh, the different the different uh properties so once you click on that you can Boom. see some some will be buy it now and some will be fixed so you can see that one is actually negotiation but if you if you place a bid at 0.65 they're going to accept uh but you can bid down to 0.6 e right. and then if you keep scrolling you see this is a first thing you're going to look for nakamoto bloodline Second thing you're going to look for is the breed type. This is legendary. That means it came from another, from two Z1 Nakamoto's. So it's like the second tier. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see, I mean, holy shit, 82 races and it has won zero races in the win percentage column. That seems <laughs> bad. That doesn't that, seem good. That is, so now think about that. We're it looking says at race a, class two also. And they yeah. can't really see the left. It's cut off uh, in my OBS, but the, the left side is coat color, chrome yellow, genotype, it's a Z2, gender, wow. it's a Colt, uh, and super coat is false. Uh, so those are the four on the left. I mean, that's insane. So we what you should do right now is pull up the Discord again and search that horse's name in the, in the Discord, and we'll be able to see the odds. Um, because... Honestly, a Z2 legendary for that little of ETH, 82 races, zero one. So if you want to talk about edge, if we look in here 
and this horse just had the craziest streak of bad luck, it might be a good buy. But uh, what was the name of the horse? Carter Starter. Farter I've got starter. him over here. He's right here. I've got him next to yeah. you so they can so see So you it. can see, I mean, it's the long shot in virtually every single race. You know, 20 But like, should long. this then be raced at class three? Well, that's the thing is, I believe uh, the baseline. He came in second here. Yeah. Just no dubs. Just so that's no the wins. problem. The the second place there might be a disaster for the owner because it gets points added to its score, so it can't get out of class two. <laughs> so <laughs> he never loses, but he never wins. Exactly. So He's yeah, the Buffalo it, Bills of horses. So there you go. You breed two Z ones, and everyone's like, "Oh, this is Secretariat two point And came you in end third with, here. Yeah. Came. Wait. Let's let's hold on. All right. So we've got the horse up now. Uh, I think I can see the watch replay 3D. Yes, go there. So we're going to watch this horse, which has never won a race. <laughs> now we have some context to it, right? This horse can't win a race, but can't finish low enough to get down to G3. Amazing. That's terrible horse, guys. All right. <laughs> but you get money for placing and showing, yes or no? You do. You do. Okay. But... I mean, think about how many, how enviable is, a, how uh, desirable is a horse with 82 races and zero wins. Where is this horse? These are all, these are all brand new horses. Mostly that were in this race. Farter says, this is back. This is his 14th race. He was 04 and nine. That's so he actually... never wins, but he comes in second, third in every race. <laughs> That's pretty crazy because as we showed also the, the odds on it were terrible too. Like it shouldn't even be coming in second and third con uh, consistently. Out of the 10 hole. Someone in the chat wrote the worst horse I've come across 263 races with not a single place, not even win place. See? That's what I'm saying. So like, if you don't win, but you keep getting, and of course the, even the replays are getting this. Oh my God. I get, I'm, I'm guessing like right behind me over here. You see that little red line that popped up. Yeah, what it says, timeout. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, for the chat. I'm trying to. S it's gonna go through the whole replay again. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. We're just not gonna watch a race. There's just no race that we're gonna watch her. We get, we can link it down in chat if anyone's curious what, yeah. uh, what it looks like. So right here on the on the page, you've got all these different things. He's never won a race, but he comes in second and third, like literally all the time. Yeah. So, so what I look to like, or what I like to look at at that point mm -hmm. is uh, the odds. So, right, like we talked about, the best horses have gone on 50, 50 race losing streaks. But if they're still in pull, if they're still pulling those good odds, then it could still be a valuable horse. So, those are the different things to look at. Um, oh, we got a top shot pack drop. Uh oh. All right. So I'm gonna have to be keyed in. <laughs> All right, so let's let's look at cheap horses. Just just yeah. for chat, and then yeah. we'll, we'll end the uh, we'll end the video. So we got all okay. these cheap horses. These are the cheapest price, low to high, cheapest horses on the site. Uh, basically around 0.1 weth, right? These are yeah. these are 175 to 200 dollar horses uh, on this first row, up to 300 dollars, up to. $500. Will you put it put it on the screen for? for yeah. The oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, right there. So right here on the first row, one seventy five, one hundred seventy six dollars for these horses, uh, three hundred for this one that's behind his head. Fool me once. That's actually a good name. Uh, up to four hundred and eighty eight dollars down here at the bottom. So if we're looking at these, let's just focus on these three super cheap horses. Okay, everything's relative, chat. Yeah. Uh, these are the three cheapest that are available right now. So using what you had said. We're going to come over here. They've got a bidding history. People are actually coming after this horse. We click on properties, as Jack yeah, has taught us. It's a, it's a class four How expensive four horse. is that? It's like a Genesis buy? class four Z9, uh, which you can't see. It's a male. It has eight races, has not won a race. Uh, but then, as you said, we can go over here. This horse's name is Viva La Dance. Sure. So we search for Viva La Dance. It's going to bring up all of his different uh, races. He came in third uh, in this race in December. 
that that is another thing to note is you'll see people who haven't raced since you know february because the competition was much weaker back then and they just kind of held these horses so what i like to do is you can track down the person who owns the horse in discord and say we'll put it in a you know put it in a present day race and it doesn't matter where it ends up you just want to kind of see the odds at that point right you want to see like kind of what it's going to do so this horse has zero wins this next horse the natural for you baseball fans out there uh is a class five horse genotype z16 so that was like you can't even get <laughs> z10 is all they're putting out in this drop right yes yeah so this is six levels below that so has this been bred back when breeding was a thing yeah it was bred to two buterins you can see it's a legendary yeah. so it's two buterins obviously uh bred together and it's run two races and has a win percentage of zero yeah but then we would go <laughs> check the odds on that well, this is a brand new horse basically right yeah yeah price low to high and shadow mirror uh same sort of thing one race class five genotype z39 I've never seen that. Before. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, and you can see the breed type is elite, which means I, I don't even Genesis know. Genesis legendary, like the, it goes down the list, right? So this yeah, has been, yeah. <laughs> this is like the great, 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 great grandkid yeah. of some Genesis tier horse. Yes, exactly. But who knows? Maybe he's a winner. <laughs> Jack, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, to explain all this stuff to everybody. I do appreciate you uh, you coming on stream uh, and kind of walking my community uh, through all this. And hopefully people found this uh, useful. If you don't already follow Jack on Twitter, definitely handle that. If one of the mods could drop his uh, Twitter address in the, in the chat, that would be great. I will put it in the description down below for YouTube. Definitely go give him a follow there and on all of his other social platforms as well. Jack, you, uh, thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. I hope to uh, see you in the drop on Friday. I will be out in those horsey streets sooner <laughs> rather than later. Other than that, look out for another video right here. He's a legend.